Hi, I'm Maggie. Thank you for stopping by Crafts the Charm today. I'm so glad you're here. Today's project is for a friend of mine. They have this gorgeous bird fabric and they picked out a matching bluish tealish fabric and zippers to go with it. And what they would like is two pillows. Their pillow forms are 12 by 20 inches and they want the pillows to have both piping and zippers. And they also have this target box that they want covered with the fabrics. So I was a little bit nervous about both piping and a zipper, but that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start with the pillows. The piping cord that I have here is 3 16 of an inch, and the piping is going to be out of the bird fabric. So I'm going to call that a quarter of an inch and add a half inch seam allowance to that and double it. So I'm going to be cutting strips from the fabric that are an inch and a half wide. Now this is two yards of fabric, so I'm not going to have to join the strips of fabric together. They will each be long enough to go around one pillow with a little bit of leftover. So I cut those strips and one strip I cut on the selvage edge. So I accounted for that selvage as extra. And then I just cut off the selvage and ironed both of the strips. And so I'm just going to sandwich the piping cord inside my strip, matching up the edges. And I'm going to use a zipper foot and a basting stitch. So this is five millimeters, the stitch, and just sew that cord into the fabric with a little bit sticking out of the end. And I'm just going to do that for both of my pieces of fabric. So with the piping all set out of the front piece of fabric, the bird fabric, I'm going to cut for each pillow a 12 by 20 inch rectangle. That is the dimensions of the pillow. It always makes me a little nervous to cut the fabric the same size as the pillow form, but it gives you a nice full pillow if you do that, no extra fabric around the edges. And then I am going to clip that piping around the pillow. And I decided that I would have the piping join up in the middle of a short edge. So I started sewing a little below the middle of a short edge and I'm basting again, so a five millimeter stitch length. And I'm just sewing that all around the pillow. Once I'm close to where I began stitching, so almost to the halfway point on a short side, what I'm going to do is cut back the fabric, unstitch the fabric around the cord and peel it back and cut the two pieces of cord so they meet together exactly. And then I'm going to take the fabric and fold over the end and put it over the other fabric, the other piece of cord. So it's, it's just going to be a nice seam there. And then I can finish stitching. Now for the blue fabric, which is going to be the back of the pillow, I need to cut this a little bit larger because I'm going to include a zipper here. So I'm going to cut that the 20 inch width, but I'm going to cut a 13 inch height. I want the zipper to be near the bottom of the pillow. So I'm going to cut across the pillow two inches up. So I will now have two pieces. One is two inches by 20 inches and the other is 11 inches by 20 inches. And 
I'm going to fold over a half inch seam allowance on the edge of the long edge of each of those pieces. Now this fabric is a little bit thinner than the bird fabric and it's a little bit difficult to work with. So I decided to add some interfacing to this fabric. So this is um, a fusible interfacing and I'm cutting pieces that go right into that seam that I folded over and that are a half inch from each edge. So for the 11 inch piece, that's 10 inches by 19 inches. And then just because of the way my interfacing was, I had just a little bit left over, which I cut and put in the long thin piece, the two inch piece as well. So it doesn't have quite as much interfacing in it, but that's just going to be at the bottom of the pillow. And there's a lot of seam in that piece. So I'm not too concerned with that. Now the zipper that I have is an 18 inch zipper. So I'm going to take my two pieces and open up the half inch seam that I pressed over, put the pieces together and just sew an inch in on each side along that seam. Now you can imagine if you lay this flat where the zipper is going to be. So if you lay it flat with the back side and put the zipper face down over that seam, you can see where the zipper is going to peek through where the opening is. So then take your zipper and attach it to one seam on the wrong side. And we're going to baste the zipper to the seam. That'll just hold the zipper in place. Then you can flip it right side over and we're going to sew a rectangle around the zipper. So I had that about a quarter inch from the opening. And of course we're not using a basting stitch now. So I went back to the 2.5 millimeter stitch length here. And also of course, when I sewed the seam, the one inch seam on each side. So now we have the back and the front for our pillow. So take the pillow front and press that piping in to the center of the pillow a little bit. And you're going to open up the zipper and put your back piece face down onto the front piece with the piping. And then I just clipped all around the edges. And then we're just going to stitch all the way around this. And you just want to stitch as close as you can to that piping. and then turn that right side out. Now for the box, the box is 11 inches by 15 and three quarter inches, and it's nine and a quarter inches tall. So I'm going to cut two pieces of fabric to go around it. One that will go along one 11 inch length and a 15 and three quarter inch length and then another which will go along the other 11 inch and the other 15 and three quarter inch length. And that's because my fabric isn't long enough to go all the way around the box. So I'm going to have to have two seams. So I'm just adding a half inch. I'm going to sew quarter inch seam allowances between those two pieces of fabric. So I'm cutting fabric that is 27 and a quarter inches long by 10 and a quarter inches wide. I added a half inch seam allowance on each end, the top and the bottom. So I'm going to cut two pieces out of the bird fabric that are those dimensions. And of course, if you have a box you're covering, you're going to want to use your box's dimensions. But that's why I told you how I figured out 
what size pieces to cut. So with those cut and then pressed, I put them right sides together and clipped them together and then I just sewed that quarter inch seam along each end. I made sure it fit my box and then I pressed those seams open. Now for the bottom of the box, I didn't want to use that pretty fabric. So I decided to use my drop cloth canvas. I've made so many projects out of this canvas drop cloth and there is so much left. So I'm just going to cut a piece, which will give me a half inch seam all the way around the edge. I then turned the sleeve of the bird fabric inside out and clipped it to the bottom piece, making sure that where my seams are were in two of the corners of the bottom piece, and then I stitched my half inch all around. Now I'm going to use the blue fabric for the lining, and unfortunately I don't have enough interfacing to interface the lining. But I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did for the bird fabric. I'm going to sew a sleeve. So again, I'm going to cut two lengths of this fabric, which are 27 and a quarter inches by 10 and a quarter inches. And I'm going to stitch those together along the seams with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm just going to fit that over the box to make sure that it fits before I stitch it to the bird fabric. So originally I was thinking that I would sew a piece out of the blue fabric for the inside bottom and leave it open on one side and attach some sort of closure like Velcro or buttons or something so that this could be taken off and cleaned. So I did leave a half inch seam allowance for both the top and the bottom. So when I put it over the box, I clipped it to the bird fabric, but I also pressed it over against the edge of the box to figure out exactly where I want to sew that seam so that the bird fabric is on the outside and just over the lip of the box and the blue fabric will be on the inside. And that was a quarter inch seam allowance, which is how I had measured the fabric, but I wanted to make sure that I was sewing it in the right place. Measurement is great, but I've found both with uh, anything I make out of wood and with fabric that it's always better to fit it in real life and make sure that your measurements are correct. So then I stitched around the edge um, to sew the blue fabric to the bird fabric and fitted it onto the box. And at this point, I decided that I thought it would make a lot more sense rather than putting a bottom piece in to take another piece of cardboard and cover it with basically like a pillowcase made out of the blue fabric and just put that inside and that will just be on top of that basically half inch seam that I have at the bottom of this blue fabric. So it will hold it down, it will hold it in place, but it'll be much easier to remove everything if I just have another piece of cardboard with fabric over it in the bottom. And I have lots of spare cardboard. So I cut a piece of cardboard. First I cut it to pretty much exactly the size of the box and then I trimmed it down because I wanted it to be a nice tight fit and I didn't want to overcut it to start. And then I just used the piece of cardboard to cut a piece of blue fabric. And what I'm going to do at the end of this is fold over a half inch and then fold over a half inch again. And so a quarter inch seam along that, that will be the top of the sort of pillowcase that I'm putting over this cardboard. And then I trimmed the other ends to exactly a half inch from the cardboard and I sewed a quarter inch seam along each end, clipped the corners and turned that and slid the piece of cardboard into that sleeve and folded over the end with the seam and then put that inside the box and that's a really nice fit. So here are the finished pillows and the finished box and pillows. I'd love to know what you think. I was nervous about sewing the pillows with both piping and a zipper, but I think they came out pretty well. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Maybe you know a better way to sew either of these projects. I'd love to hear about it. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this sort of content, 
please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.